Hey guys, welcome to tomorrow's vlog today. So today, uh, I'm going to be setting up my gear and packing all my gear for a photo shoot I'm doing tomorrow. And I'll be working with a company called Hourglass Workouts, which is a gym that caters specifically to women. And uh, from what I understand, from what I've done with them in the past, is they have different challenges for women. You know, who loses the most weight, who uh, puts on the most muscle, who... I, I, don't remember, I don't remember the categories exactly, but all the women in this gym and this organization that accomplish whatever goal and come in first get a free photo shoot with me. So they pay me, I go in, I do the photo shoot, and it's quite a great experience. And these women, they love it because, you know, they, I guess you, you go into the gym and you don't feel like you're as hot as you want to be or as fit as you want to be and then you work out for months and months. I don't know how long the period is, but they have their, their deadline. So you work out as part of the gym, as part of the uh, the whole routine there. And then when you win, you get a photo shoot with me and then I come in and make you look glamorous and beautiful and awesome and amazing. And these women are always excited when they get their pictures and they're just like, woo, it's like Christmas time. So it's a lot of fun. All right, so this is the thing, let me focus there. I don't know if they're gonna let me vlog tomorrow at the shoot, I haven't asked them yet. I'm gonna bring the camera, I'm gonna try and vlog anyway, but if the women feel uncomfortable with uh, me vlogging because they're not, they're not models, they're just women who are working out and they're gonna get some pictures done. So if they're not comfortable with me vlogging, then I won't vlog and maybe what I'll do is I'll do a post-shoot vlog and talk about the experience. Uh, if they are comfortable with it, then obviously we'll make a video and I'll try and promote the organization a little bit because I think it's really cool what they're doing. Uh, so this vlog is going to be split up into two. So this is the day before vlog. This is me getting ready and packing all my gear and tomorrow the vlog will be about me going to the shoot, doing the shoot and if I can't show you the shoot, then talking about the shoot after the shoot. But even if I can show you the shoot, I'll probably talk about it afterwards in any case. So right now, it's time to clean up all this and get ready for tomorrow. Okay, so one thing I like to do before every big shoot is plan out the lighting in my head before I get there, just so I know exactly what I wanna do before it even starts. So, that represents the wall, that represents the model, and this represents my camera. What we're shooting is a clean white background, isolated on white type of shots. This is going to be a white backdrop, either a white wall or it's going to be a paper roll backdrop. First things first, in order to make the wall white, we're going to have lights here and here. So this is going to shoot onto the wall, this is going to shoot onto the wall. And for argument's sake, let's say that these are both one half power. Now what we need is another set of lights here, because I do like edge light. So we're going to have lights here and these are going to come here and shoot just in front of the model and what that's going to do is create a bit of a shine or an edge around the edge of the model which gives them a little depth because if you're shooting on a white background and then you have a model in front it's quite boring and quite flat so you want to use edge lights to create a little bit of depth now depending on what the models are wearing depending on their hair color uh, the edge lights can change. I usually use grids for these, so let's draw. So there we go. It's a gridded light, so it's only going to shoot in one direction and not. See, the thing is, you can use flags or grids, and the reason why. So what happens is, with the grid, the light shoots straight across the room. If you use a cone, you're going to get a wide spread of light like this, and you could risk light bouncing into the lens and causing some flare. So. If you're going to do this, always use a grid or use flags like this to block the light from coming back this way. So if these are a half, these two lights would probably be one quarter. Of course, uh, this can all change. And then we're going to use two big umbrellas, one here, one here. And these are going to shoot at the model. And these are probably also going to be one half power one half power. It could also be one quarter power, we'll have to see. These have to be pretty high up, so these will probably be six feet in the air because you want them to shoot down onto the model. These will be up high too, these will probably also be six feet. These, I don't know, these would be about the chest level of the model, so let's say five feet. And this is height by the way, five feet, six feet, six feet. And then one more thing, because you have lights coming from either side this way and either side this way, you can create a weird shadow down the center of the model. So you need one more light here, 
and this is going to shoot directly okay there's something under there at the model all right and you want this light to be as close to the camera or close to centered as possible unless you want one side of the face to be a little darker than the other in which case you would move it out that way or that way depending on what you want and this light here has to be seven feet tall and it's probably going to be one and a half power it could even be up as high as full power can you see down there well, there we go so this is going to be seven feet high and the reason this is seven feet high is um let's say you have somebody's face here you've got the eyes and the nose see my drawing skills are amazing if um and here's the neck so here's the thing if the light is below all right chest level or neck level you're going to create weird shadows around the nose and around the eyes and the upper lip they might look like they have a mustache so the light has to be higher than their head level so the shadows naturally fall a little bit under the nose, a little bit under the lip, and then you get a nice little shadow under the neck. So this, this light is the most important in the whole setup. And this light should also be the brightest. So it's going to outshine these lights here. These are going to be more like fill lights. This is going to be the key light, edge light, edge light, background light, background light. Now the important thing is, is that this light, and well actually these lights all together, let me get the red pen, I'm making a mess here. So these three lights here, when they hit the white background, they have to equal the same intensity of these lights hitting the background. So that's where you have to balance your lights. These don't really matter so much because they're edge lights, they're not really affecting the background. But these, these group, or this group, and these two, have to hit the background at the same intensity otherwise the model will be too light the background will be too dark or the background will be too dark and the model will be too light so there has to be a balance these guys have to equal each other all right so there's the lighting setup for tomorrow okay i'm coming back to correct myself here i got a little this was wrong um the balancing is wrong here um so forget this here the light coming from this group here hitting the model has to be at the same intensity as these lights hitting the background. I don't know what I was thinking here, that's wrong. So yeah, these lights hitting here have to equal both these lights hitting the background. So that's the correct formula. All right, switch to time-lapse mode now. Okay, so I'm going to try and do this as fast as possible because I know this vlog is going to be super tight on time. Alright, so this is my lovely drawing. I hope you like it. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lights. Okay, so let's think about that. Seven lights. So, first of all, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stands. Always make sure you have seven stands for seven lights. You don't want to be caught with not enough stands. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six and a ring light for the key light. So that's seven lights. And also, this is great advice. Make sure you have seven power cords because I did it once where I went to a shoot without a power cord and thank God these alien bees run on computer power cords. So I was able to like jury rig something but always make sure you count cords as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so we're done with the lights. We got seven stands, seven lights, seven cords, done. All right. I always bring two extension cords with me and at the ends you can see there's three prongs so these two extension cords cords turn into six outlets here are the two giant umbrellas one and two so we're good here's my Manfrotto heavy-duty tripod stand or not tripod stand tripod so there we go all right so now let's look at the next thing so here we have two lights that point at the wall so we need two uh, light modifiers so we've got these two guys here so those are going to be pointed at the wall then we have the two edge lights which point back to the model and that's what these guys are here these are two strip lights with grids so these will be pointed back at the model and then two umbrellas which we have here and then we need modifiers for the lights to fire the light into the umbrella and that's what these two guys are and then we have the key light at the back, which is gonna be the ring light, but this ring light, believe it or not, is nine years old. It's being held together by some tape here. As you 
you can see. And it's all decorated nicely from nine years of use and it's fallen apart. And it's been working fine, except recently it's been a little intermittent and it sometimes shuts off while I'm shooting, which is weird. So I'm gonna have to test this out tonight and either I'm gonna bring the ring light or I'm gonna get another Alien B and I'm gonna use this giant cone, which will also work as a really good megaphone. So doubles up as a megaphone, handy, right? And then we have this little tripod here, which is for the vlogging camera, nice and light. So if I'm gonna do a time lapse at the shoot, that's that. We have everything we need in terms of lighting equipment. This doesn't include camera equipment, but all the lighting equipment we need for the shoot is there. And we're gonna do a time lapse of me putting it all away right now. All right, so there it is. Everything you just saw on the table fits in these three bags. And now for the good stuff. Okay, so this goes with me on pretty much every shoot. We have model releases and a pen. We have the battery, extra battery and charger for this guy here, the G7X. A charger, two extra batteries, plus a battery in the camera, which is a 5D Mark III. And on the front here, we have a, a 70 to 200 F2.8 LIS. Which here we have a loop in case we do anything outside. Here is ND4, ND8, and a circular polarizer filter. I bring those with me all the time. In case we have tricky lighting, I don't really set the white balance on my camera much, but if we're mixing different types of lighting and it gets a little tricky, I will use this to get the correct white balance. My two ancient pocket wizards, look at these guys. This guy's even painted and sparkly. We have the male end to male end jack for the pocket wizards, extra batteries for the pocket wizards, memory cards, I got the fast ones, I got some slow ones as backup. For 24 to 70 f2.8 L here, this is the Gen 1 lens. This is a Holga lens, a little plastic piece of junk lens, but it produces some interesting photos. I have a remote trigger, I've got a little mini tripod. This is probably going to go on the vlogging camera if necessary. So there we go. That's what I bring with me. And then I have my low pro bag empty. And in a second, it'll be full. Oh, and it's like magic. Look at that. It's already packed. That's fantastic. And I almost forgot one very important thing. You've got to always have business cards. I handed those out a little while ago, so I have none in my backpack. But there we go. There are the Studio V business cards. Will this thing focus? Look at that, those are beautiful. I love these cards. Oh, lost one. And while I'm replenishing my Studio V business cards, I might as well put in some more Vasco photography business cards. These are beautiful, I love these. These are really nicely done. So, if you want a wedding photographer, a commercial photographer, portrait photographer, or a glamour photographer, which is Studio V, you can call me. All right, dudes and dudettes of the internet and photographers, I think that is everything. I think I got it all. I'm gonna double check in the morning before I leave to go to the shoot. But uh, I think that's it for part one of this vlog. Part two will commence on the flip side. Yeah, I don't wanna muck up the paper too much. But anyway, so what happens is with the 